This year, because of the global pandemic, we've had to do things differently, including our Kennedy Center graduation celebration. Even though we can't come together and celebrate in person, we want you to know that our alumni and performers around the world are cheering you on. You'll get to hear from some of them today. Greetings from Perth, Western Australia, where I can attest that the influence of the David M. Kennedy Center extends to the farthest reaches of the globe. Uh, unless I'm mistaken, sitting as I am in, in Western Australia, I can lay claim to being the, the graduate of the Kennedy Center on the farthest point on the planet on land away from Provo, Utah, where you are sitting today or virtually wherever you may be. But my name is Gordon Flake. I'm the CEO of the, the Perth US Asia Center here at the University of Western Australia. Uh, and I received a master's degree from the David M. Kennedy Center in 1992. Now, I, I recognize that for you as graduates, this has been an extremely uh, difficult year, a uh, difficult and unusual year thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, there are a few corners of the globe that have been spared by the pandemic. Uh, we in Western Australia are in a bit of an unusual situation, a bubble within a bubble, if you will. It may be hard to believe uh, viewing this from the United States, uh, but we have actually had only a single case of community transmission uh, over the last year. Um, and that has been good. We've had an extremely normal life going to the footy, uh, going to the beach, going to restaurants. But at the same time, uh, that has only been accomplished by shutting us off, not just from the rest of the world, but from the rest of Australia as well. The, until late last year, our state borders were closed as well. Uh, and so that's a trade-off. And it's a trade-off that had a particular impact on my chosen field of endeavor, uh, international relations. Uh, when I left the Kennedy Center nearly 30 years ago, I went to Washington, D.C., where I spent two decades working in the foreign policy think tank community. Uh, now, I love Washington. Uh, I really appreciated my experience there, but I have to confess, as someone who was born in New Mexico, raised in Arizona, and schooled in Utah, I spent every day fantasizing about moving back to the West, and in late 2013, I just overshot uh, and went a little bit too far to, to Western Australia where my family has settled. We've become Australian citizens uh, and working here at the University of Western Australia are in Australia's Indian Ocean capital in the same time zone as Singapore, Hong Kong, Manila and Beijing uh, with 60% of the world's population within a two hour time zone bandwidth uh, and feeling like we're at the cusp of the coming era of the Indo-Pacific. Now, the pandemic has changed a lot of that uh, because the, the business model for foreign policy think tanks is international travel, large conferences, seminars and workshops and joint research projects. And all of a sudden, in the course of the first few weeks of the pandemic in early last year, uh, we had to figure out not only how to work from home, but how to rework our entire business model uh, over the course of the year. And I'm extremely proud of my team at the Perth US Asia Center for making that adjustment. As we reflect back on 2020, uh, though we weren't able to travel, that we weren't able to bring in a steady stream of international visitors, uh, the same technology that allows me to speak to this convocation, convocation virtually allowed us to do more events, do more virtual programs, do more research, reach more people, have more media, media reach than we had planned to do otherwise in 2020. Uh, now, that said, uh, I probably like most of you do still have a lot of wanderlust, a desire to get back on the road and back in the saddle again, because we have been able to ride on 30 years of accumulated networks and relationships. Uh, and while those relationships are easy to maintain virtually, it is relatively more difficult to build new relationships. There is no substitute for being there. And such, let me end here by congratulating each and every one of you for your tremendous accomplishment in graduating from the Kennedy Center today and from BYU today. I am confident that the skills that you have learned, the, the values that have been imparted to you, the friendships you have developed, the perspective that you have gained, gained not just on the United States but the world will su serve you well regardless of your chosen field of endeavor. I, as an alumni of the Kennedy Center, congratulate you. I wish you the best. I'm confident that this COVID era will end and that despite the difficulties we have all faced, uh, we will be more nimble, uh, we will be more adaptable 
uh, because of that experience and then as thus better prepared to carry out the mission of the David M. Kennedy Center and our shared effort to better understand the globe that we live in, including the far off points like Perth, Western Australia. Thank you all again and congratulations. Hello from Bawino and Ibu Warsigi and Kesa. 
We miss you. We miss BYU very much. Congratulations, Credit Center graduates. We hope to see you soon. Bye bye. Hello from Abu Dhabi and congratulations on graduating. You have done so well to get this far. I know how hard it is to get your degree at BYU and how much work you have to put into becoming an international relations major. So well done. Here you are, you finished. Uh, I graduated from BYU in 2014. I got my master's at the University of Cambridge. I interned at the White House for President Obama and worked in international development in uh, Lebanon and Iraq. And the model that we have been often raised to have is that what you should do is find something that you're good at and stick with it because that will pay off. It will give you stability and it will give you an insurance for a good, prosperous future. That, I think we can all admit at this point, really isn't the truth anymore. Uh, things are just changing too fast. The climate, for one thing, is changing in such a way that things will be much more unstable in many countries throughout the world and with us. And we're also interconnected that there's no way we can escape that. Uh, political systems are evolving rapidly, and that has enormous impact on everyone. So change is simply going to accelerate. And we are young enough and capable enough that we can learn to change our model from stability to adaption. We can choose to be people who are adaptive. And that's what I admonish you to do is to think of yourself as someone who, no matter what the circumstances, recognizes what the problems are, recognizes what they can do, and adapts to it. That's what I'm attempting to do, and I believe you can do it too. So congratulations for being at this point, and I hope that you can become one of the people in the world who is bringing great good, who is bringing peace, prosperity, and more health to all of us. Uh, I hope you embrace the excitement of this era and not just the instability, but go at it with enthusiasm and that we can all work together towards creating the more prosperous future that we and our children deserve. Thank you and congratulations so much and good luck. Senbeno, congratulations from Mongolia to you as the Kennedy graduates. I wish you good luck as you go forth to serve in your chosen field and community. I'm so glad that I studied international relations because it has opened many doors of opportunities in my personal and professional life. My advice to you for the future, be genuine and sincere to everyone. Be trustworthy, be proactive, be a problem solver. Collaborate with others to find creative solutions to problems. Treat everyone with respect. Listen to and follow your heart when you are not sure what to do. Most importantly, don't compare yourself with others and always remember you are smart and unique in your own ways. Again, congratulations to you all. Hi, fellow BYU students. My name is Hinata. I'm speaking to you all the way from Brazil. I'm very happy and honored to be a part of such a special day, uh, a day when you celebrate such a great accomplishment. I would say actually two accomplishments. You're not only graduating from a top university, but you're also doing so during this crazy time that we're living with this world pandemic of COVID-19. So it, it's doubled the challenge and you've made it. So absolutely congratulations, congratulations. I want you to know that you, you should cherish everything you learned and look forward to the future. Um, the Kennedy Center and BYU have taught me so much. And even though I've been working with photography in the tourism industry, I can say that I have used absolutely everything I've learned um, while studying at BYU. I hope uh, you can look back at this year, even though it's been extremely hard, that you can cherish the good moments. For me, it has been spending time uh, at home with my family, something that I haven't done in many, many years. Focus on, on the good, you know, congratulations on, on such a great accomplishment. And now let's look into the future and let's learn from what this year has showed us.
warm congratulations from England to this year's graduates. My advice is this, seek to differentiate yourselves. If there's one thing this difficult year has taught us, it's that we can learn a lot by email, by video conference, by pouring over the data in a spreadsheet. The world is at our fingertips and we need people who can synthesize the deluge of information coming at us. But one other thing this difficult year has taught us is the importance of on the ground information. We can't learn everything sitting in front of a computer. Some things can only be learned on the ground, face to face, one conversation at a time. Remember, culture is so much more than just language. And I'm convinced that those people who understand this and those organizations that employ them will have a competitive advantage going forward. So once again, congratulations, and we look forward to seeing what you accomplish. Congratulations to the class of 2021, all the way from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Wow, what a year to graduate in 2021. 15 years ago, I walked graduation at the Kennedy School um, in uh, the Green International Studies. And um, uh, about a year ago, um, my family and I were living in Germany, uh, working there, and uh, we had an assignment to come here to Ethiopia. Uh, and then the pandemic came and it took us about eight months to get here. And during this eight months, it wasn't just the multiple surges of the pandemic in this country, but uh, Ethiopia went through uh, a civil war. It went through a major humanitarian crisis and a catastrophic natural disaster with crickets, all sorts of things. And during this time, we had multiple opportunities to quit or to take on another assignment. But I think what helped us the most during this uncertainty uh, was to stay focused, to realize why we chose to do what we do and why we chose to come here to Ethiopia. And it's 
easy during these uncertain times to uh, change course or to quit. And sometimes you have to do that. But I think it's really important to um, stay focused uh, on your key priorities, on your long-term goals. So again, congratulations to the Kennedy School graduates. Um, by the way, you chose absolutely the best college to graduate from. But it's true. I, um, if, if, if I want to give you an advice on this to remember to really why you chose the majors you chose and why you chose to go to the Kennedy School. Uh, if you're like me, is because you wanted to play a role in international affairs or in international studies. And um, when you graduate, uh, if you have my experience, then you may doubt yourself. And like me, you may spend seven years in the wilderness in a completely different field working for Wall Street. And then you'll come to your senses and then you'll realize um, where your heart truly belongs and why you've wanted to work internationally and do the things that uh, you want to do. So stay focused on that and remember that. And um, good luck to you all, you'll need it. And all the best, take care. We will now recognize the students graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Ancient Near Eastern Studies. Emma Ray Krutbosch. Abigail McKenna Booth. Amanda Lynn Kint. Angela Lee Cochran with a minor in English graduating cum laude. Dallas Meeks Taylor with a minor in psychology. Jackson Craig Abhow with a minor in Biblical Hebrew, graduating magna cum laude and Phi Kappa Phi. Jacob William Dayton, with a minor in music. Jeremiah Peter Madsen, with a minor in editing, graduating magna cum laude. Rachel Grace Carter. Stina Evelyn Plomgren, with a minor in history. We will now recognize the students graduating with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Asian Studies. Congratulations to each of you and best wishes as you move forward in life. Ashley Tuckett Pitts with a minor in Korean. Bradford Clausen Davies. Dylan Thomas Elton. Ethan Michael Fong with minors in global business and literacy in Chinese. Hagen Christus Jensen with a minor in Chinese. Ni Bao Fan with a minor in Chinese. Tiffany Elizabeth Burnett, with a double major in Korean. Congratulations. We will now recognize the students graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree in European Studies. Amanda Lene Bealy. Corinne Elizabeth Johnson, with a minor in Family Life. Dallin Scott Durchy with a minor in Art History and Curatorial Studies. Sylvia Susanna Klein, with a minor in History. Taylor Alexandria Wilhoyt, with a minor in Political Science. We will now recognize the students graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Latin American Studies. Amanda Carolina Leon, with a minor in Middle East Studies. Blake Elizabeth Smuin, with a minor in Spanish. Daniel Carl Bradley. Dane Joel Johnson, with a double major in Spanish studies. Destiny Love Mary Aiden. Eliza Marie Hanley, with a double major in Spanish studies. Eric Joshua Burnett. Grant Ashton Cagle with a minor in Spanish. Hayden Lewis Anderson with minors in gerontology and global business and literacy. Jacob Michael Tedders with a minor in global business and literacy. James Michael Aaron O'Rourke. 
Joseph Avram Diaz, with a minor in global business and literacy. Kelsey G. Noakes, with minors in art and Spanish. Liesl Coons, with a double major in Spanish studies. Madeline Brooke Sabi, with a minor in TESOL. Mason Warner, with a double major in Spanish studies. Michael Jonathan Jude Bruno. Nathan Knudsen, with a minor in global business and literacy. Philip Gregory Bustos, with a minor in global business and literacy. Logan Jeffrey Roberts. Shaylin Taylor, with minors in Spanish and global business and literacy, graduating magna cum laude. Thomas Anthony Robbins, with minors in Portuguese and Spanish. Congratulations to all of you. We will now recognize the students graduating with a Bachelor's in Arts degree in International Relations. Adam Inglis Strathair. Alexander Edwin Cutshaw, with a minor in International Development and Asian Studies. Amanda Maria Gach, with a double major in German Studies and graduating with University Honors. Ammon Steele Forston, with a minor in Global Business and Literacy. Andrew Ian Elliott, with a double major in Portuguese Studies. Aubrianne Anderson, with a minor in Chinese. Austin Robert Greenhurst, also with a minor in Chinese. Benjamin Thomas Weber. Brandon Joseph Fletcher, with a minor in Statistics. Caleb Ryan Hampton. Devin Vaughn Weaver. Emily Jeanette Scholes, with a minor in International Development. Felicia Reed Kaplan. Jared Michael Russell, with a minor in business. Joseph Carlson Barr, with a double major in German studies. Joseph Condi Prophet, with a minor in Korean. Kevin Liam Dalton, with a double major in French studies. Lauren Summer Harvey, with a double major in Russian. Liam Cole McMullen, with a minor in Arabic. Lois E. Salas Mora. Marisa Angele Gonzalez Mabbitt, with minors in Global Business and Literacy and Spanish, and also graduating with University Honors. Matthew Kalini Mew with a double major in Russian. Megan Jane Alden. Michael Paul Butler. Miranda Lucille Olson, with a minor in legal studies. Riley Davis Hoyt. Samuel R. Jacobson, with minors in Italian and local studies. Sarah Annalie Nauman, Soraya Lan Hua Hong, with a minor in Asian Studies. Finally, we recognize the students graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Middle East Studies, Arabic. Alden Peter Thirio, with a minor in Global Business and Literacy. Andrew Christopher Olson, with a minor in Linguistics. Caitlin Noel Stock. Christian Luke Mays, with a minor in Global Business and Literacy and a minor in Computer Science. Christian Morgan Hawks. 
Clayton Scott Van Workum with a minor in anthropology. Colton Brian Richmond with a double major in Arabic language. Dalton Hoken Bradford. Daniel Joseph Harker, graduating magna cum laude and Phi Kappa Phi. Ella Catherine Baldwin. Hannah May Miller, with a double major in Arabic language. Jarrett Dean Anderson, with a minor in Ancient Near Eastern Studies. Joshua Ethan Brown. Madison Diana Fire Brown, with a minor in Political Science. Megan Riley Madrian. Micah Nathan Russell, with a minor in International Strategy and Diplomacy. Nicholas Scott Hainsworth, with a double major in Sociology. Richard Jensen White, with a double major in Arabic Language. Stuart Mitchell Truman, with a minor in Business and Zachary Kenneth Nuttall. Kennedy Center graduates, I am so proud of all that you have accomplished. And as the director of the David M. Kennedy Center, I wish you the very best as you move forward in life. With the completion of your bachelor's degree, you join a very elite group. Only about a third of adults in the United States have a college degree, and worldwide it's less than 7%. I hope you recognize how very blessed you are and appreciate the sacrifice of those tithing members of the church who have made your education affordable, especially those who gave the widows might, knowing their own children may not have the same opportunity. It is up to you to take the skills and abilities that you have received and give back. Look for opportunities where you can improve the lives of your sisters and brothers across the globe. As graduates of the David M. Kennedy Center for International Studies, you, of all BYU graduates, should be prepared to go into the world and make a difference, to go forth and serve. Please do so prayerfully and with humility for the blessings you have received. Congratulations, graduates. Now go make a difference.